Hey traders, this is Blake Marl with Trader Summit and I get a chance to interview one of my favorite people to interview every week is Mr. Dick Matthews from 1.io. How are you, Dick? Good to see you. I'm very well indeed. I'm even wearing a 1.io hoodie because I'm a hoodie kid these no, days. No, you're a crypto bro. That's what <laughs> uh, No, no, no. <laughs> you're officially a crypto bro. Um, you know, uh, Richard, before we hit the record button, um, you had mentioned something, and I, and I think we it's worth talking about. Um, you're 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 sensing a little bit of a, a a change in in tone in the markets. Can you explain what you're talking about and what you're feeling? Yeah, it's, it, it's interesting actually because the last time we spoke, I think Michael was on with us, and we were talking about maybe the Fed's going to change its target levels, give itself space to cut, blah 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 blah. But I just get a, a feeling that sentiment is starting to swing in the markets uh, away from cuts. I think people are starting, oh, we're going to get two cuts now, the three cuts, you know, backing away from it, which I think is interesting. To me, there's always, you know, there's, there's always things at play in the markets. And I think you've got geopolitical risk is the big factor, the unknown factor. You've got a slightly softening economy. I mean, Jolts was, I, I read, subtly disappointing, which I guess is someone trying to say it wasn't quite as good as expected, but it's still a, an OK number. ISM was, you know, I'm no great fan, but wasn't brilliant either. Um, but I think what's going on in, in the world generally is is a worry. I think WTI's popped up, has reflected what's going on in, in the Middle East. I think Israel whacking an Iranian embassy uh, was brave. Uh, whether you see a response, but through the Houthis, you know, I, I guess it's why WTI's backed up. But I'm, I'm really interested in seeing gold up at these levels, and I'm I'm not a gold bug, but there's certainly you know reasons for that, which it seems strange. Well, okay, so I guess uh, the the devil's advocate here is why is, and this is the question I want to ask you. Why is the market going to care now? I mean, the market didn't care when we had six potential rate cuts in 2024, down to two or three, three down to two. Um, geopolitical risks, uh, you know, Russia can take out Ukraine or invade Ukraine. You know, uh, Israel, obviously, in Gaza. And that that horrific event, market just doesn't really care. When's the market going to care? Yeah. When? I'm, I'm asking you. What I mean... It'll be one random event that we don't, you know, I don't think you can predict it. Uh, I, I'd be surprised if the smart money still are buying equities. I think it'd be one random event that you can't see coming. It might be in the Middle East. It might be China doing something. Um, the earthquake in Taiwan, I, I guess, is inflationary. It affects the, the manufacture of chips, which are very, very delicate, how that's been affected. You know, there's so many, to me, there's so many risks out there. Then you just go to, oh, you know, China, you got Taiwan, you got Ukraine, you've got, you know, is Macron going to do something stupid in France about being tough and going to Ukraine? I doubt it, but you don't know. Then you've got Israel and Iran, which are imponderables. You've got so many risks out there. Um, and I just think that is the thing which will change the market as opposed to the perception of when we get cuts. Okay, well, you know, we have maybe maybe there's a little bit of a change in the tone of the market, or maybe the market cares a little bit more. But uh, I'll tell you what the market really didn't care for today is we we had uh, you know a, an ISM number that came out a little worse than expected. Employment, the employment numbers and the prices paid were a little high. The employment numbers came down a little bit, um, and the dollar has sold off. So your 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 stance in the past, which has been very correct. Uh, has been, you know, buy dollars, wear diamonds. So in other words, you're a dollar bull. Has that changed for you at all ahead of the jobs report this week? No, it hasn't. I think, uh, I, you know, looking at the, the major pairs uh, for start, I would still buy the dollar and sell the euro. I think the euro, gonna, they're almost nailed on to cut in June. Uh I think that I would also buy uh, the dollar sell sterling. Uh, I don't think that we're going to cut. I think we've got our own problems apart from cutting. I think we've got a lot of political problems in this country. 
We've got local elections coming up in May, which again is going to put pressure on the government. But I think that we cut next. So just looking at interest rate differentials, that's how I play it. And the interest rate differentials between the dollar and the yen, you've got to buy, you know, keep buying the dollar there. Bonds still look, you know, yields aren't particularly sliding in bonds. So I would still be a, a fundamental buyer of the dollar. I, you know, non-farm, I think, is a big number. I think the bigger number is CPI next Tuesday. Is it the tenth? Uh for CPI. Uh let me let me just confirm that for you. But um uh, I, I, I guess CPI would be the following week, which would be the uh twelfth. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, so oh, okay. You you still want to buy dollars on dips, but here's here's the here's the rub. Um here again, here I'm gonna play devil's advocate. You've got a huge rally in crude oil. You've got crude oil breaking above 85 bucks. You've got copper that's uh, hit a new trend high above 420. Um, you've got gold, can't back off of all time highs. It's trading at all time highs. Even silver has managed to break out. Yeah. And you're seeing the commodities complex really rally here. Even Nat Gas has a little bit of a bid over the last couple of days. So um, if, 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 if commodities are going higher, is the dollar going to be able to sustain, or do you think that commodities might be sold up at these levels? Uh, I think you've got to split between, obviously, between soft and, and um, metals. Uh, I think softs are going to be, I would say to Michael Brown, actually, that that's probably the market we should be looking at this year. I think you're going to see more volatility in softs than you are in, in currencies, purely because of the weather, as we were discussing beforehand. The, the weather's crazy. It's going to affect softs. I don't look at softs, but I think that there could be some good volatility there. I think metals are really interesting. I think gold is being pushed, and you're going to love this idea. I think the Chinese are sitting on Bitcoin. I think the money wants to get out of China so quickly, and the Chinese government is suppressing Bitcoin, and consequently people are buying gold, because all other risk assets are rallying apart from Bitcoin. And which seems like, you know, just seems a bit strange to me, having looked back over the last six months. Uh, but going back to, to your question, you know, that against the commodity ca uh, currencies, I think you probably may well sell the dollar. I just I just think against the euro and sterling that, that you carry on buying it. All right. Well, you know, it's it's uh, it has been a very interesting market, Richard. And and, you know, it's we're in a pretty low volatility environment. Yeah. Stocks are at all time highs. Uh, commodities are moving higher. It seems, and volatility is obviously very low. It seems like something, is, the, the market's sitting on a precipice of, of something, of something big happening. Uh, you've been around these markets for a long time, and I don't want to, I'm saying that with, with the utmost amount of respect. Thank um, you. But based on your knowledge and your experience, how do you feel about the markets where we're currently at and what could what what's what's the trigger you're looking for uh, uh i think you're absolutely right right volatility to me is probably a bit too low with all the with the geopolitical risks that we've got um i i still feel that whatever's going on in israel and, and gaza is far from over and I just think that they're your one push of a button, and I don't mean a nuclear button, but your one push of the wrong bombing button, the wrong drone button away from the absolute hell breaking loose there. And probably the same in Ukraine. You know, I think it was last week a drone flew into uh, Polish airspace. You know, the, the, the calculations have to be so exact. And I think in war, that you can't be that precise. And I think that so far that they have been amazingly lucky, maybe, uh, to, to not cause even bigger outrages. So I would be looking for a geopolitical event. It might, funnily enough, it might have been the, the earthquake in Taiwan, which is a huge earthquake, might be a, a moving factor. All right. Well, I, you know, I know... I like to ask you questions about, especially about commodities and stuff, based on your your prior experience of... Uh, of of owning a commodities brokerage firm and 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 uh, and your years your your years of experience there, but now that you're a crypto bro, can you uh, tell us a little bit of how we follow your work uh, today? Do I have to sort of start doing all this nonsense yeah. and pointing? Yeah, man. totally. Yes, you do. 
<laughs> I showed my grandson some some videos of me trading on the floor, waving my arms around. He thought that, that was a bit of that. <laughs> um, you can find me um, at Dickie Matthews with uh, a five instead of the S on Twitter uh, and at one and uh, on one uh, on LinkedIn. Well, thank you, Mr. Matthews. It is always good to catch up with you. And I look forward to our next meeting probably in the next week or two. And uh, and and if you guys and gals enjoyed uh, our conversation here, make sure you give them a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel down below. It's free to subscribe and you won't miss any content by doing that. Click the bell icon so you're always notified when we do release a new video. So thank you, Mr. Matthews. We'll catch you on the thank next you, one. Sir. Whatever you do, I don't know. Uh, whatever that means, God knows. Me neither. My teenagers <laughs> do it too. So, <laughs> <laughs> cheers. Now, bro. cheers. <laughs> hey, traders, Blake Morrow here. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, click the bell notification so you do not miss any of our market related trading analysis from some of the leading industry experts. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.